Jim, here is an email sent to cornydrivethru at gmail.com from Chuck Nolan Jr. in El Ra- El Re- We've seen this before. You know it. El Ria, Ohio? Illyria. There you go. Hello, Colin Thompson Hunters. <laughs> is the art of the chaotic finish lost on today's generation? To me, the gold standard in chaotic finishes is the Dusty Tully $100,000 match in 1987. Everyone involved, from Tully and Dusty to Tommy Young, JJ, the cameramen, the production, etc., were perfect in creating a true chaotic moment. I just feel if they were tried today in WWE or AEW, the people involved would try to do too much and make the moment contrived and over the top. So, Jim, is the art of the chaotic finish lost? Oh, uh, well, yes. We, we talk about it a lot in, a, in different wording. But remember when I'm talking about, God damn, they've done this and that and the other thing in this match and all this crazy shit, and then all of a sudden the finish either just happens or it's like they've run out of things to do and then they just ended it, or you can see the finish coming a mile away where they're either hitting the guy with the same finish four times in a row or the they're in the middle of the ring in a submission for a minute and then tap, whatever. And part of the... There was another finish that was just on... that was more modern. Because I'll tell you one thing with Dusty and Tully, I'm glad he liked the production, but to be fair, those guys, the Crockett's crew, had the barest idea of what was going to go on. <laughs> And I'm, it's not like Dusty was trying to kayfabe them, but they didn't have time to sit down. Nothing was ever walked through. Anything involving run-ins, it was told in the locker room, and you ran in, and where you ended up was, you know, that's why guys needed no ring positioning. But a more recent finish that was chaotic and built to a big pop was Luger and Hogan from Nitro, I guess, in... The dying days, of the, uh, apparently... Yeah, I just saw you tweet about this. I was yeah. surprised how much you put it over. Well, because even though even though Hulk was, was getting older then, and, you know, some of the shit and was not... Somebody said, oh, well, look at his clotheslines. The point is they built the fucking thing. Everybody was in the right place. It was a good finish. It may have not been executed like fucking Riggy Steamboat and Flair would have done it. But they built the babyface up as a Superman. Nash and Hall and Savage were all trying to run in and stop Hogan from getting his ass kicked. And they, the way that they orchestrated it, at one point, Luger had grabbed Savage as he came in the ring and fucking ran him and chucked him over the top rope on the other side and then turned around and clotheslined Nash and he took a hell of a bump over the top rope. And turn around and did something to fucking haul, and boom, down he went. And Hogan tried something, and fucking Luger ducked out of that and got him up in a torture rack. It kept going and building, and people were flying in the right place, but nothing was stepping on top of each other. You saw everything clearly, and the, everybody was in the right place to do the timing. And then, you know, when he had Luger had moved on the leg drop or whatever the fuck. That's what I'm talking about when you have a good match and get them involved in what's going on but then you want to fucking pick up the pace it's like the train wreck it, it when the train is going 80 miles down the tracks you're creating tension but you're not saying holy shit until it comes to the part where the fucking trestle blows up and the bridge falls down and the fucking engineer is about to jump out the window and see if he can make it before the train goes. And oh shit, it all happens at the same time. That's when you pop. And nobody's doing that anymore. In terms of those chaotic matches and controlling it so it doesn't go too far, one of my favorites, and you can tell me what you think, and you may hear some of the gardeners outside in the vicinity. Oh, here we go again. But I've always talked about the match I love, Crockett Cup 87, Midnight Express Road Warriors. Because yeah. there's so many things happening with both teams around that period of time, but on that night, in that match, it eventually completely breaks down. The fireball's been put over because you burn Ronnie Garvin. You take it out, you just miss it, the place explodes. But to me, the highlight of that is Bubba gets in the ring. 
<laughs> and it happens. It, it looks so, it looks kind of clumsy, but because of that, it looks real. He ducks Animal, and then Animal comes back and hits him. Oh, no, Animal ducks him, and then Animal hits him with the shoulder block. Place explodes. Baltimore. He goes to the floor. They explode again. He falls into you, and yes. then you go up in the air, and you yes. land, and the place explodes again, and it's pure chaos, and it's so much happening with a lot of different parts, because Ellering's involved, too, but it all worked. We got, we got like three pops with the same bump. And none of, again, none of that was planned. It was planned. Obviously, there's shit going on. The referee's distracted. Everybody's involved. And I go in behind Animal's back to throw the fire and burn him. Right as he turns around and I've lit the fireball, that's when Ellering has dove in and, and grabbed my leg and tripped me. When he trips me and I go down, the fireball goes up right in front of Animal's face. He still goes, oh, shit, and falls backwards to get away from it. But as Ellering has got me and I'm rolling out, that's when Bubba got in to try, as you said, to try to do something. And the I, th I think the only spot that was called was that Bubba would fucking go to do something and animal would duck it and shoot him off and hit him with the shoulder block or whatever. But the way that it worked out, they ran across the ring like two and a half times back and forth before the shoulder block. And then Bubba flies through the ropes, as you said, and I see him coming. And as he lands on his feet there on the floor, I go right up next to him and just take a shoulder tackle and go down. And then he goes and hits the rail. So we got shoulder tackle pop bump to the floor pop and both of us then caroomed off caromed off like billiard balls third pop but it just making use of your surroundings here he comes i'll take one 